In our sarcopenia series, we're talking grip strength, a seamlessly simple measurement of hand and forearm strength, which has emerged as a powerful predictor of overall health and longevity. Recent research has established a robust connection between grip strength and various health outcomes, including cardiovascular health, mortality, and notably the risk of dementia. I'm Simon H. Muscle After 50 coach. And in this video, we're going to delve into the relationship between grip strength and longevity, emphasizing its correlation with dementia risk and presenting evidence from multiple studies to support these claims. And then we're going to close out the show by showing you some great exercises to strengthen not only your hand grip, your wrists, but also your forearm. Now, all research papers that I talk about, links are in the description. Now, are you ready? Come on, let's go. Grip strength is not only just a measurement of the muscle in your hand and forearm, it serves as a proxy for overall muscle mass, physical strength, and general health. The underlying mechanisms linking grip strength to health outcomes are multifaceted. The first area we're gonna talk about is muscle mass. Mm. A higher grip strength often reflects greater muscle mass, which is essential for metabolic health and physical function. The second area is total body strength. Grip strength is correlated with overall body strength, indicating better physical conditioning and resilience. The third area is physical activity. Maintaining high grip strength typically involves regular physical activity, which is known to enhance cardiovascular health, reduce inflammation, and improve metabolic function. Now, several studies have demonstrated a clear relationship between grip strength and longevity. A meta-analysis of 42 studies involving over 3 million participants found that lower grip strength was associated with a higher risk of all-cause mortality, cardiovascular mortality, and non-cardiovascular mortality. Emerging evidence suggests that grit strength is also a significant predictor of cognitive health. A pivotal study published in the JAMA Network Open in 2020 explored the association between grip strength and the risk of dementia and cognitive decline. The study involved over 190,000 participants and found that individuals with higher grip strength had a 70% lower risk of developing dementia compared to those with a weaker grip strength. Now, this profound relationship can be attributed to several factors. Neuroprotection. Regular physical activity, which helps maintain grip strength, promotes the release of neurotropic factors that protect and repair brain cells. Vascular health. Stronger muscles contribute to better cardiovascular health, reducing the risk of strokes and other vascular conditions that can lead to cognitive decline. And then we have metabolic health. Higher muscle mass improves glucose metabolism and reduces the risk of diabetes, a well-known risk factor for dementia. Now here are some practical and easy interventions. Strength training exercises that enhance grip strength, such as resistance training and functional exercises can be incorporated into health promotion programs to improve overall physical and cognitive health. Also, regular monitoring of grip strength can help identify if you're at risk of cognitive decline and other health issues, enabling early intervention. Now we've got that out of the way, I'm gonna show you some grip strengthening exercises that you can do at home, without weights, in the gym, with weights, so you haven't got any excuses. Come on, let's We work. interrupt this program to bring you an important announcement. When you download our free cheat sheet, not only will you discover the secrets to transforming your body and your life in your 50s faster than you ever imagined, you'll also discover how to gain muscle in your 50s. This will shock you, not only because of how easy it is, 
but the speed at which you'll see results. You'll also find how to lose weight in your 50s. We'll reveal the method that completely flips everything you thought you knew on its head. No fad diets, no grueling cardio sessions. And if you've been feeling like a dead car battery, it's time to get your energy back. We'll show you how. Now the link for this free cheat sheet is in the description. Okay, before I start, I just wanna mention this one thing. It's not good enough just to say that you train at the gym, because if you train at the gym and you only use mostly machines, which can be joint friendly, so I can see why people would use or prefer to use machines. Machines aren't going to increase your grip strength. Holding heavy dumbbells and stuff in your hands is more likely to do that job. So while you are using machines, you also need to add a little bit of time when you're going to do stuff that includes holding heavy objects. So the first exercise is just a simple in grip strength and endurance exercise. I'm gonna show you how to do it with a weight, pretty simple exercise, and then what you can use at home if you don't have any weights. So the first thing I'm gonna use is a disc. Just a simple weight disc, this is a 10 pound disc. And what we want to do with every one of these exercises is to start off in a manageable form, and then use progressions to work up over time. So in this exercise, we're simply gonna use a disc, and all I'm gonna do is hold the disc in a hand grip like this, just using my fingers. And what we're doing is we're doing this exercise for time. So you might start with 20 seconds, then you'll extend it the next week to 30 seconds until you get to about a minute. You always want to start with your weakest side first. Always use that as your strength marker because it's no good doing starting with your stronger side and doing 40 seconds with your stronger side, but you can only do 30 seconds with your weak side. So always start with the weaker side first. And all I want you to do is hold it with your fingers. As you can see, I, I'm not gripping it all the way down, but I'm holding it at the very edge. And then over time, I might want to then change it to a heavier disc. So this is a 25 pounder. I'm gonna do exactly the same, holding it. And all I'm doing is just holding it at the side, holding it for time. Now, if you're at home and you don't have disc, that's not a problem. All we're gonna use is a book. So we're gonna start with the equivalent of our 10 pounder, which is a nice thin book. And we're gonna do exactly the same. We're just gonna hold it for time. Once you want to progress, you can either go for a thicker book or you can add the thicker book to the first book and just hold it at the side. Now, if you do 30 seconds on this side, turn over and do 30 seconds on the other side. So that's our first exercise. Exercise number two is the exercise that you saw me doing right at the beginning of the video. And that is, we're gonna take a small dumbbell, and I always start off with a smaller dumbbell until I get the hang of an exercise. And instead of holding the dumbbell on the handle, what we're gonna do is we're gonna turn the dumbbell on its head, and we're gonna hold the knuckle. Now this, is slightly more advanced than the first exercise because with the first exercise we were using a smaller grip. Now we have to extend the area that we're trying to grip. So now what we want to do is to be able to hold something like a light dumbbell on its head. And all I'm trying to do is squeeze my grip around that head. Now we'll do the same thing, start with 10 seconds, move up to 20 seconds on week two, and you might want to do two or three rounds per workout. So I'll start here, and then I'll move it over to this side. Do exactly the same time on this side. And always write down your progressions, so you're not guessing, and on week two you're not stepping back, but you're moving forward. 
So after I've done this one, what I'm going to do is I'm going to progress with something heavier. So exactly the same. So that was a 15, now I'm using a 20. And what I want to do before I move up again in weight is to be able to hold this for about 45 seconds. Once I can do that, that's when I want to move up. Now for those training at home without a dumbbell, that's easy enough. All you need is an empty tub and then you can fill that up with water. And you might only want to fill it up halfway on the first week and do exactly the same. Hold it in your hands. As you progress past 30 seconds, heading towards that 45 seconds, you might then say, okay, I'm gonna fill this up. So you fill it up and that's how you can progress with that one. Over time, you might want to get a bigger tub or a tub that holds more weight at the bottom here or has got a bigger circumference at the top. So that's exercise number two. Okay, for exercise number three, we're gonna do something called a suitcase carry. Now you may have seen it in some of my previous videos because it's such a great exercise. Not only does it give you more grip strength, it gives you core strength, posterior chain strength. It does a lot for you. So the way we're gonna do it is we're gonna hold a dumbbell in one hand and you can either do marches on the spot and you can say let's do 20 marches each side and that can be one set or you could walk a certain distance and you can either walk a certain distance or walk for a, a certain amount of time i.e 30 to 60 seconds and you want to be holding something in your arm on one side and the best way to do it to make sure that you are taking full advantage of the exercise is to make sure that when you put one object in, say I'm using my left side here, that my shoulders aren't sloping and I'm walking like this or marching like this, that I'm concerned with keeping my torso straight, my shoulders balanced, keeping my chest high, my, uh, my chin forward, and that's how we want to do it. Okay, now progression would be to use something like a fat grip. Now, the reason why I would use something like a fat grip is because now it increases the circumference of what I have to grip. Now, if you don't have a fat grip, you can easily wrap a towel around the handle of the dumbbell. So I'm just gonna wrap that around the dumbbell. And as you can see, it's made the handle a lot thicker, which means that I've got to use more grip strength and I may have to concentrate more on holding that. So rather than just going up in weight all the time, you can also just add a thick towel, tea towel around the handle to really emphasize that grip. So now I'm holding that and that feels a lot harder than just doing it with the handle. Same objective is I wanna keep the, whatever I'm using balanced, making sure my shoulders are level, making sure my chest is up, making sure, sure my chin is forward. And that is exercise number three. Now we've had the grip strength covered, let's talk a little bit about wrist strength because they're all interconnected. So our first exercise is going to be a wrist curl. Now the way I'm going to do this wrist curl is I'm going to do one arm at a time, but I'm concentrating on keeping my elbows tucked in. You don't want to keep your elbows out here because then you're adding stress to your shoulders, unwanted stress. So tuck your elbows into your side and I want to kind of rest them on your hip. You can do it seated. You can do it leaning your whole forearm and just have your wrist over the edge of a bench or a table or anything like that. But I'm just gonna, for the sake of this video, just gonna hold it like this. So I'm gonna start with the dumbbell in my fingers. Now with this exercise, please be careful that you don't drop that weight on your foot. So you wanna hold it like this. And as you can see, shoulder, right angle, elbow, and then 
a right angle again down to where the weight is. I'm going to start here in my fingers. Then I'm going to curl the weight into my palm and then curl my wrist up. And you probably want to do six to eight of those repetitions, nice and slow, so you've got control. Start going all the way to your fingers. Then you're going to curl into your palm and then curl your wrist into your forearm. And then you'll do the same on the other side. Now, you haven't got a weight at home? No fears. We've got a shopping bag full of groceries. Well, it isn't full of groceries. It's got my old pot in there. But anyway, same principle. Tuck your elbows in. Start with it in your, in your fingers. And then the same principle, curl fingers into palms, palms into wrists, wrists into forearm. And then reverse it all the way down. And remember to do the same on the other side. Okay, we've got one more exercise. And this exercise is for all the guys that are saying, yeah, 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 we've seen all of those ones. I want something now for my forearms. Okay, so I've got something for your forearms that you might not have done before. But once you've done these, you won't forget you've done them. So we're tackling our brachialis, which is the muscle in between our tricep and our bicep that runs along in between there and it travels into our forearm. We're also covering the brachioradialis, which is the biggest muscle in the forearm that travels all the way down. If you tense your arm, you can see it coming all the way down into here. So the way we're gonna do this is we're gonna take two dumbbells and we're gonna use our body momentum to really focus on stuff. So I'm gonna take a side profile here, now, we're going to start in a hammer position here. And as you can see, I'm leaning forward. And you're wondering, what the hell is he doing? Watch. So I'm here, elbows are tucked in. And we're trying to keep our elbows tucked in all the time. So I'm here, but as I extend there, watch what I do. I pull back and put all that tension now on my forearms. Rock in out and when i'm rocking out i'm trying to extend extend that dumbbell so that bottom knuckle is tucked in right in my wrist so let me show you again and don't race this you'll want to race it because you're going to feel that burn pretty quickly and if you're thinking boy oh, he's only using girl weights i dare you to try it and then come back write in the comments how you felt I'll tell you, after four weeks of doing this, you're gonna see not only a bit of growth on your forearms, but your forearms are gonna feel much stronger, and then it translates into being able to use more weight in all your compound movements. So let me show you again. We start in that hammer position, elbows tucked, and then we go from there, boom, there, boom, there, Boom. Now you want to make it harder? I'll tell you how to make it harder. Start in this position. Now instead of just racing it, we're going to go five seconds. One, two, three, four, five. Hold. One, two, three, four, five. I ain't going to show you another rep because I did these yesterday. So my arms are still hurting. Now, if you do these exercises, as consistently as you breathe, well, not that consistently, but we want to be incorporating them at least twice a week. You're going to notice that not only can you pop open jars like Popeye, is that your grip strength is going to translate into grip strength, into carrying shopping in without a problem, being able to do lots of stuff, and also it'll translate into your workout strength. Now, that's the end of the video. Please like, please share. And if you're not a subscriber, how dare you? Subscribe. And on to the next time, stay safe. Train smart. Peace.